I set the exact times that I will accept calls and in the exact days. Typically, you know, we're looking about one to four grand, like consistently depending on your goals, mainly your lifestyle goals and what you want out of the business. And then you'll also know how to sell it well in the DM. I've sold $20,000 on the chat. I would recommend doing my system. The other option is to sell it. it might not be the best long-term option for you. They both have pros and cons. So can you get clients without doing sales calls. Now, this is a follow-up video to the one I made the other day about building a $1 million a year, one person business. So if you haven't seen that, you can check it out. But today we're gonna to talk about if you can actually sell high ticket and get clients without doing sales calls. And the answer is yes, you can. And the thing is about myself is I've done both. I've done high ticket via chat and I've done them over the phone, hundreds of sales calls. And I've worked with many, many clients to have done thousands of sales calls over the phone. And some have done some via chat as well. So I'm gonna go over the pros and cons because both of them are possible. And and some of them are ideal depending on your goals, mainly your lifestyle goals and what you want out of the business. Because the thing about sales calls is for most people, if you don't want to do the sales call, if it tires you out, if you get stressed out from doing sales calls and always having to talk to people and bring them in and sell them because you know you have to actually get on calls and sell people, convince them to come into your program, then it might not be the best long-term option for you. Especially when you start looking at your calendar and you know the calls really start to pile up. You start to get two, three, four, five, calls a day from people who want to buying your services but then you also have to fulfill on them right you have to onboard a client and then coach them so and then you have to live your daily life as well so it can really add up and some people they don't like to do sales calls so the other option is to sell it via chat now once again they both have pros and cons and i'll go over the pros and cons of doing sales calls which is what i actually recommend for most people and i'm going to give you a suggestion on what to do if you're getting a lot of calls and how to kind of make sure you only get on the absolute best calls that are going to close because this is what i used to do back at you know, I might get 10 calls and then I only closed two people, for example, or three, which means the other seven calls kind of went to waste. Whereas nowadays, almost every sales call I get, I basically close, right? And it's because I put some systems in place to make sure I actually only get the right people on the call, I mean, they're actually going to buy and are also going to be the best clients as well. So that way, I'm never wasting time. I already know who's coming on the call and I'm pretty confident they're going to buy and they typically already want to talk to me versus back in the day where I used to do 10 people and you only close two. So if you're in that situation, there are a couple of things you can do to kind of minimize those bad leads coming into your funnel and you know you're just stuck doing like one call close i used to do two call closes three call closes you're back and forth following up and it's basically a hassle to just get a client into your business so what i've changed since then this is something you can think about as well is so mainly being very very specific with who you want to work with so very being extremely specific the more specific you are the better so in my case it's six and seven figure coaches and consultants that have the active problem that i'm trying to fix for them right which is usually going to be client acquisition so if they're not in that kind of category, I will never get a call with them. So it doesn't matter who is, you could be a five-figure coach, you could be a new coach, you could be uh, a coach, but um, you don't care about getting new clients with ads. If you don't fit the exact criteria, I'm basically not gonna get a call with you. So that's how I save myself from the eight, eight out of 10, I'm not gonna close uh, for, for the most part. And then it's also about them knowing who you are. Now, this really comes down to you also doing work beforehand to educate them on what you do. So with me, for example, I have, and I've made a lot of videos, explaining explaining my processes and showing testimonials beforehand so they know what I'm selling, they know who I am, what I'm about, and they've seen me teach the stuff that I'm gonna teach them. Because really the reason people are not buying on a call if, if they're gonna call with you is because of you know some kind of objection, right? It's typically gonna be price, it's gonna be what you're offering, um, and it's, it's gonna be things like that. So another thing that I have, uh, for example, is I put a solid application before they book a call. Now you might already been doing this, right? You might already have applications, but it's how you really structure your application and your funnel properly in your website. That's really gonna determine who comes in and how they come in. Because it could be the same person, but just framing it with the right mentality can change how they show up on the call and which side of themselves they show to you on the call. Right, because if you have an application um, that's structured the wrong way, you, you're going to get people coming on with the wrong mentality, the wrong mindset. So you want to have an application where, once again, you have to be extremely strict and specific with who you let on the call and the requirements you have. So if you have a requirement, for example, let's say um, you know my business, one one of our requirements is you know you have to be spending on ads like right now. So or you have to have spent at least $10,000 on ads, right? And you have to run a coaching consulting business, a high ticket offer. And more importantly, you have to have signed up at least 
50 to 100 clients. So in my application, uh, if I see someone has basically no sign up any clients, they don't make any money, or maybe they, they sign up a couple of clients, but they're basically in the early days, I'm basically just, they're not even going to come on the call. It's, it's, it's that simple. So it's more about avoiding the problem than it is um, trying to you know fix it once they come on and trying to do a whole, a whole TED talk on why you can't work with them. You want to be extremely specific on your application about what you expect from them, who you want them to be in order to come up on the call. Because they might see that, they might come on your application and you say, because if, you, if you're specific with who you are, people are going to start to respect that. Because if they come on your funnel, on your website, and you tell them you have to make six figures uh, or seven figures or eight figures, even if there are seven figures now, or five figures, for example, if in two, three months they get to six figures, they're going to remember that you're the guy that works for six figure people. And they're going to come back to your phone and they're going to fill it out properly and they're going to come on the call properly and they're probably going to buy because now they fit all your criteria. So those are two things I've done. So once again, it's mainly going to be content, content indoctrination, and then having a proper survey uh, and your website is structured the right way to make sure they know who you expect to have on the call. And then they know kind of where they should be to work with you. And that's how you all get the right people on the call and only the right ones where almost every call you get, you basically close them as opposed to you close like 20% or something. It's, it's, so you basically wasted 80% of your time. Obviously, people can say, you know, do follow-ups and all this stuff. But really, who has time for follow-ups? I'll be honest with you, uh, follow-ups have been a massive waste of time. So if you're doing follow-ups, um, you're going around still doing three core closes, four core closes, you're literally wasting your time most of the time. At least from my experience from years of doing business and I used to follow up with people for months and even a year later. I can tell you right now, the people that have bought from me high ticket, five, 10 grand, 15 grand, they bought on the first call, like 95% of the time. If they didn't buy in the first call, they bought like within the days, like a couple, they, they bought a couple of hours later, they bought within the day, they had to make a quick transfer, they had to check their bank, like they always bought immediately. Anyone that didn't buy like on the call, they, they never bought. And I know it's, you know, some, some people, you know, you get on a call, they tell you the whole life story and you, you know, you, you kind of think they're going to buy tomorrow. Chances are they're not going to buy. Um, and, you know, many coaches say this, like if they don't put a deposit now, at least a deposit. So, if, so obviously if, if they buy on the call, that's the perfect situation. But then the second best is they put a deposit. If they're able to put a deposit down, then they probably will buy. There's a high, high likelihood. If they won't even put a deposit down, the chances of them buying is almost, is basically nothing, less than 5%. So you really don't want to waste your time. You just want to get the right people on um, that, are, that are going to buy. You do one call. If they don't buy on that call and you've pitched things the right way, I would definitely not waste your time. Uh, once again, the worst case, you get a deposit. So you do like, you do like 10% of your program. So if you charge 10 grand, you, you do one grand uh, deposit. If they don't do that, just completely count them out. That's what I would do. As for DM sales, so I've done a high ticket DM sales. You can do that, but typically your first 30 to 50 sales, I would still recommend doing calls just so you know how to sell the thing. Yeah, that's that's what I would say. I would I would still recommend doing calls because then you know how to kind of pitch your service and then you'll also know how to sell it well in the DM. Is the issue is if you've never sold on the phone, it's just not the best situation to be in. Ideally, you've sold on the phone and then you go to DM. You don't want to be a guy that's only ever been in DM. You never sold on the phone because you're, you're missing a massive skill set and you're really missing out on talking to people that you're basically going to work with. But DM sales are not bad. Personally, the tickets that I've sold at and I've seen people sell out, like uh, some friends I've worked with, you know, doing eight figures. Typically, you know, we're looking about one to four grand, like consistently. Now, I know people might say, you know, I've sold $20,000 on a chat. Good for you. But, you know, we're talking consistent daily sales from your average audience that's going to buy from you. Uh, now, obviously, if they know who you are, now what the issue with DM traffic and people saying they've sold a $20,000 program over DMs, if someone's been following you for 10 years and they watch every story and they've been, they, they're your diehard follower, then of course they're, they're happy to pay you $20,000 in the first chat, right? But for to close the average person over chat, Without them saying like, oh, let, let, let me get on a quick call with you to to kind of confirm all of this. You're looking about 
once again, one to six thousand dollars max, I would say. Yeah, and this all depends on how you pre-frame. What content do you have beforehand? How well do they know you? You might set up a rule where it's like they have to follow you for X amount of months before you pitch them via DM. Because the thing about pitching via DM, uh, high ticket, it's just about when you do it. Obviously, if someone follows you and they want you, like, hey, you message them, hey, it's five thousand, they're probably not gonna buy. Whereas if they've been following you for like a month, two months, they've like watched your stories, they're in your group, they watch your videos, they're more likely to buy. So it's more about timing when it comes to DMs. But one thing is for sure, you'll definitely be losing out on sales. Like there's, there's no question about it. Anyone that tells you DMs are selling via chat, like you're 100% losing out on sales. Like if, if you made 10 grand that month, for example, if you did calls, you probably would have made 20. Like, well, you know, you know, so you are sacrificing, but like I said at the beginning of the video, it's about lifestyle optimization. If you want to have a fun lifestyle where it's like, you know, you're on the beach, you're surfing, you're just making uh, multiple six figures, you're relaxing uh, and you're, you're happy to lose some sales, provided the fact that you don't have to do sales calls. That's fine, uh, but you just got to accept a sacrifice, right? But if you actually want to maximize sales, uh, but you don't mind doing some calls, right? Then I would recommend doing my system. So I still do my system. I still do everything I want. I still like my routine is almost never affected by a call because the way the, the other thing I do with calls, by the way, is I set the exact times that I will accept calls and then the exact days. It's almost never, it can never affect my schedule, right? Because I will say on my calendar, you can book a call Monday, Friday at these times. And once again, if, if something did come up, I would just reschedule the call anyway. So, and once again, I'll only get on the calls with people who are good. And then another big thing is, which I can talk about in another video is, I don't even need to sign up that many clients because I have a lot of recurring clients who just pay me every week, every month. So it's not like I'm always trying to get new clients anyway. So that's something I recommend for you as well. Whoever you sign on, just find a way to get them to be recurring somehow. So that way you know you don't have to chase clients and do these sales calls. Because that's the root of the issue. The, the root of the issue is, right, you don't have recurring clients or you don't have enough. Because if you had if every client signed on never churned out of your business, then you would you know, after you sold a hundred clients, you would never need another client again because they will all just be inside your business. So that's something to think about, right? So personally that's the strategy. I do have a lot of current clients. I don't even need to take that many sales calls. Also my appointment setting I've outsourced. So I have my brother appointment setting for me. He's setting the sales calls for me and he knows who to bring on the call for. This is another thing I didn't mention as well, but there's, there's too many things to mention. So he sets the appointments. And once again, he follows my strict criteria on who he outreaches and who he gets on the call with me. So this saves me so much time. Like just in the past week, for example, he set me one call and I closed the call. That's how specific like we are with um, with who he outreaches to and who he gets on the call with me. Um, it's like whoever he sets, it's like it's not like he's sending me 10 calls, I close one. Like that that would be, you know, a terrible metric. So many appointments said it's like set as many calls as they can, right? It's like set as many as you can, provided they fit one or two criteria. Whereas with me, it's like they have to fit all of them. And so his conversion rate from setting a call to me closing is extremely high. And that's what I measure him on more than just how many time slots he puts in my calendar, how much time he wastes on my calendar. Because really, I don't want to take calls with people that I'm not going to buy. It's just a waste of time. So that's what I would think about. Uh, DM sales, you will lose sales. Um, the way I did it, by the way, if you want to know, is once again, I followed the exact strategy, which I just mentioned. I literally, I built up an audience of people and then I launched uh, my new program and then I had a bunch of people come into my chat, qualify, send them a Stripe link, they just bought. Once again, it's because they already kind of know you. Uh, I've done this with new people as well. So I've, I've done DM cold chat with new people. Once again, we're talking 1500 max, you're right? Um, this was a B2C. So B2B, I was able to solve $34,000 via chat. Uh, B2C, we're talking 500,000, 1500 via chat. So I've done a lot of sales via chat, actually, a decent amount. And you got to know your limits and you got to know who you're selling to at what time. If you're struggling with calls, just think about how you can change your process so you only get the, the right people on that you just love to talk to because if you love to talk to them, you're going to love to have them as a client, right? So there shouldn't really be an issue having them on a call. So it's just about your process of who you let on your calendar. Like you have to be really strict with who you let on because it, it really can really mess with your mind if you get all these people that just stress you out, never buy, they don't, they don't respect your service. And you're basically doing 10 calls, getting one, you're following up, stressing out, you're hoping they're going to buy, but they don't. And then they're just wasting your time. I would really do that first. Be stringent with who you let on. And then, you know, if, if you really don't want to do that, you can look at DMs, right? Can I sell via DMs? Probably can. You could probably even pick up some sales. So people who would have never bought from you uh, on the call, because some people, they, they just don't want to book a call. So I've had people like that, by the way. People who just, they just don't like to get on a call, super introverted. They, they just want to buy via chat. 
and that's fine. What I did is, once again, I would just send them a Stripe link via chat. Once, obviously, you qualify them and talk to them and all that stuff, and then you just you know sell them via chat. Uh, but just make a strong front end qualification process. Create that type form. Have content explaining who you are. And once again, this is going to be a little bit slower than what you might expect, right? It's going to be a little bit slower. Even DMs are slower. It's selling my DMs slow too. But getting the right people on the call. If you're going to everyone book, then obviously you can have everyone booking. But if you're going to be strict with who you come on, it's going to be slower in the beginning, and then it kind of builds up, right? It's because obviously, if you tell everyone you can't book, less people are going a book but then when the right people see it then more of the right people see it more of the right people see it, and you're doubling down on your content you're also uh promoting it more you're you're getting more clients so you're less needy you have recurring clients so you can keep promoting you keep your wait list high so there's ways to do this in a very good way and once again you can build a wait list that's another thing i haven't spoke about i can do in another video if you have any questions about this leave it below there's just so many aspects to building a um like a one person one million year business you can build wait lists if you have a wait list and you have recurring clients that that is just the best model to, that's basically what i'm doing by the way is <laughs> is i'm still working on the wait list because i've never done a wait list before but this is what i'm working on is building a wait list i've always had recurring now it's just about building the wait list in like a proper way which i'm still trying to figure out how to do but because typically you know clients they just come they're ready they just buy and come in but, but i gotta see if waitlist even makes sense for what i'm doing because typically, typically people kind of they just join so waitlist might not make that much sense but in your case it might actually make sense it just depends on what you're selling kind of how it goes how your offer is it's just having a pipeline waitlist can also just be followers or your email list just people who like you you give them value regularly and then you have recurring clients if you have a combination of those two that is an absolutely killer combination as opposed to the wrong way which would be just anyone booking in you're closing at 10 percent. you're following up half of your day right people booking in at 8 a.m in the morning and you're struggling to get up to get on a call <laughs> and you're stressing out and then imagine they don't even show up you woke up at seven they didn't show up to the call um, and then you sell a one-time product and everyone just leaves so then you have to keep chasing new clients so it's a very bad model right like you're getting people coming in they all want payment plans as well right they want payment plans and then they come in they pay once or whatever they miss the payment plans they don't show up and then you have to keep chasing new clients that's what i did for a little while as well by the way so so I've seen both models. If you have any questions,